Thunderbird, a free, powerful, open source email client. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. What I want to do in this video is basically highlight a few of the features and maybe even quirks of the email client that I find myself uh, recommending frequently. And to be clear, I do use Thunderbird myself in at least one important scenario. When I say email client, what I mean is a program that's running on your PC with which you manage your email, read, send, archive, etc. That's different from going to a website. If you go to outlook.com to read your email, or if you go to gmail.com to read your email, you're not using a program on your PC other than your web browser. When you actually use an email client, the email is getting downloaded to your machine, which has several interesting advantages, some of which you might actually already guess. So what I'm going to show you now is Thunderbird. So you can see I already have it installed and running, and I actually have it configured here for my example Hotmail account that I've been using for a lot of these videos. I currently don't have any email in the inbox. Uh, it was full of spam when I started this, uh, this up. But the bottom line here is that you can use Thunderbird, like any other desktop email client, to access your Outlook.com or Hotmail email. In fact, that's exactly what I've done. If I right-click on it, you can see there's an item for settings, which opens up another tab. And this shows you all of the appropriate settings for that account. This tends to actually have a lot more options than most email clients do. It's one of the things I do like about it. You can see that I'm using an IMAP server here, which means that the email isn't removed from the server when I download it. It's actually only removed from online when I actually delete the mail here on my PC. There's options for copies and folders and where things to go, how aggressive Thunderbird's junk mail filter needs to be, how things are synchronized, whether or not you use encryption. This is probably not as useful as you might think unless you are already familiar with PGP and GPG uh, encryption. But if you are, it's built in. And of course, return receipts, which basically are something that simply don't work in today's internet. And you can see there are also something called local folders. Now, what I want to point out about local folders is simply that they are exactly what you might expect. In another video where I talk about dealing with some of Outlook.com's space issues, one of the solutions is to, in local folders, create yourself your own folder and then drag and drop email from, say, your Ask Leo example or your Hotmail inbox and then drop it into one of the local folders. That will do two things. One is it will remove it from your Outlook.com account, but it will still keep the email by copying it to your PC where it will live. Then, of course, when, you pay, when your PC gets backed up, that email gets backed up as well. A couple of other quirks. You'll notice that there's no menu bar, but that's actually only because it's hidden by default. If you press and release the Alt key, you can see that the traditional uh, menu bar shows up, including help, about Thunderbird, I'm using this version. You can see that it actually is up to date. This is how you update Thunderbird. I have options set in Thunderbird's preferences to automatically uh, update itself as needed. Um, and you can see the menu bar goes, uh, goes away when you're not using it. But again, Alt will bring it back up. Uh, let's see, there are contacts, of course. There's a calendar, there's notes, there's actually even uh, some kind of chat. This is something that for the most part, I don't use. I use Thunderbird for one thing and one thing only, and that is email. Why do I harp on Thunderbird as an email client? Well, as you can see, it's really full featured. Everything you might want out of an email client is here. However, that's actually not the reason I like it so much. To understand why Thunderbird is so important to me, we need to actually take a look at how Thunderbird stores its data. So all of these files, all of this email, say we'll look at the 2021 archive, there's one, there's some more archives, um, here's the big archive, you can see that it has you know, a bunch of email in it. 
Where the heck is that? It's stored somewhere on your machine. It's a copy of the archive folder that shows up in Outlook.com. But where is it on the machine and what can we do with it? Well, what I'm going to do is fire up Windows File Explorer. And I've already opened up a folder. You can see here that it is C users, my username on this machine, ask LE, app data roaming Thunderbird. This is the location of Thunderbird's data store for this instance of Thunderbird. The file that matters most, the file that actually tells you where things are stored is this file called profiles.ini. I'm going to open that with Notepad so we can see what's inside. You can see here that there is this install, profile one, profile zero, general, yada, yada. The thing to care about is usually this default profiles in this weird profile name. What you'll notice is that that is the name of one of the folders we will find in the profiles subdirectory. So you can see here in profiles.ini, it starts with profiles slash. Well, that indicates it's a subdirectory. So we'll click, double click on profiles, and there is that weird looking folder name. Now we'll double click on that. This is where Thunderbird is storing all of your information. And by all of your information, I mean literally all of the information, including your logins, your authentication stuff, your email, your content, everything is here. I have another article out on askleo.com that talks about how easy it is to move Thunderbird from one machine to another, because all you really need to do is copy this entire folder and put it in the appropriate place on another machine, install Thunderbird, and you've got everything on that other machine. And what's also interesting about that is that that other machine does not have to be Windows. Thunderbird is available for Windows, for Mac, for Linux. It really is a true good cross-platform email program. But we were talking about email. So there are two folders here that matter the most. One is called IMAP Mail and the other one is called Mail. IMAP Mail will be a folder for an account that has been configured to use IMAP. As you saw when we were taking a look at my Hotmail.com uh, settings, it is indeed configured to use IMAP. So if I double click on this, now we'll find outlook.office365.com. We'll double click on that and look at that. Here's a bunch of files, but they don't necessarily mean anything to you, do they? Here's Inbox, and it claims to have a bunch of stuff in it. It does not. I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the archive. This one is, gosh, seven megabytes of information. But you know what? It is just a text file. I'm going to open it with Notepad so that you can see what's going on inside. It may look very confusing. There's a lot of gibberish in this file, but your email is here. And the reason, honestly, this is the number one reason I use Thunderbird, is that this is not a proprietary format. This is an open format that can be used by other mail programs. It's called MBOX format, M-B-O-X. And the fact that email is stored, A, as plain text, and B, in an open format, to me, sells this completely. If you use a program like, say, Outlook, uh, any of the Outlooks that are out there, or some of the others, most of them store data in a proprietary format, which means you need to run their program in order to even be able to look at your email. Whereas with Thunderbird, everything is text files. Now you'll notice here, there's this archive.msf. You know what? That's not even necessary. What happens is if Thunderbird finds an MBOX file, a plain text email file in one of these folders, the MSF file is essentially, I'll call it the index. It gets rebuilt automatically if it's not there. So that means that even better than Thunderbird creating and using this open source format, if you happen to get a text file that is in MBOX format, which is very easy and very common to do with many mail systems, 
You could just copy it into a folder and it will appear in Thunderbird magically the next time you start it up. So there is the archive that, like I said, here's the inbox. Um, here's my outbox, which doesn't have anything in it, of course, because I haven't got anything queued. Sent is the sent mail from this account. You understand these are the files that contain your email and they are easily readable. Like I said, to me, that's a really big deal. One other feature I want to touch on because so many of the online email programs don't support what I'm about to do. And that is simply sorting by what you want. <laughs> For example, in Gmail, it's very difficult to get a display sorted the way you want it sorted. If you want it sorted by sender, you can't really. You can search by sender, but you can't necessarily sort by sender. And I believe the same is true for Outlook.com. So what do we do? Well, we do the normal thing here. If we talk about the correspondence, I click on it and now it's sorted. All of this email is sorted by the correspondence in it. If I want to sort by subject, I can do that. If I want to sort by date, I can do that. If I want to reverse the sort, all I really need to do is click on it again. You'll notice here the arrow is pointing up. If I click on it again, the arrow is pointing down. That makes Thunderbird a wonderful way to basically manage your email. If you want to grab all of the email from a particular person or on a particular day, it's trivial to sort by whatever it is you're looking for, select them all. You can do a normal selection, click, control click to select uh, discontinuous ones, or if you like, a uh, shift click to select a range and do whatever you want with them. You can, of course, do a lot of different things. There's tags, you can mark them different ways. You can archive them or it'll do the right thing. You can move them to specific folders. This is how you would, for example, potentially move things to a local folder if you want that, that set up. You can copy them, you can move to junk, any of those kinds of things that you would normally be doing with email. Finally, the last thing I want to touch on is yes, it has search. I understand, you know, Gmail being Google is really good at searching, but honestly, so is Thunderbird. So if I fire up quick filter here and I just search for, I don't know, I'll search for Microsoft. If I can spell it right. And you can see that it is in fact showing me messages that have Microsoft in the sender, the recipients, the subject, but not the body. If I want to uh, only restrict it to those with Microsoft in the subject, there it is. If I want to include any occurrences of Microsoft in the body of the email message, I just turn that on and there it is. So you can see that it is very, very powerful and there are more things that you can do with search than just the simple stuff, but honestly, this to me gets you about 95% of the searching we tend to do in email anyway. So that's Thunderbird. Like I said, it's a very brief, very shallow demonstration of exactly what Thunderbird is, but it is a program that I strongly recommend you use if you want to use a desktop email program on your PC. And, and this is the other reason that I recommend or use Thunderbird myself. I've talked about email in the past and I actually spend my day in gmail.com. All of my email, even the Ask Leo email goes through gmail.com, but that's all online. And I'm uncomfortable with that in the sense that it's not backed up. It's one place. If something were to happen to my Gmail account, I would lose everything that was stored there. That's why I have in my basement, in on, on a machine, a copy of Thunderbird that is also synchronizing with my Gmail account. What that means is that whenever email shows up in that account, it's automatically downloaded to that instance of Thunderbird. When that machine gets backed up, all of my email that's been downloaded gets backed up. It's a wonderful way to just sort of maintain an additional safety net for email, even when you're using it online. And like I said before, multiple times, in an open source format so that even if I lose Thunderbird completely, I can still read the mail and I can use other email programs to access it if I want to. But I don't think Thunderbird's going away anytime soon. So I hope that gives you a flavor of what Thunderbird is all about. Hopefully it's something worth checking out if you're looking for a desktop email program. 
for updates, for comments, and for an article that actually takes a slightly different approach at describing Thunderbird, visit askleo.com slash 12528. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.